If you ever had a second chance You better be thankful If you ever had a second time around Man, I've been through it, I lost out and I faced what the fun's wrong Feel no hope, bad thoughts choosing to die, go home When I was sitting up on that gray hill, my mind went through these zones Like you got none, lost everything, it's no good feeling alone Hey, pops had no dollars, life didn't make sense How did I end up back where I started, what did I miss? I went from condos to pops house, on calls, now bus routes And the one person who had the key to my heart took it and checked out what up, what up, it's your boy Paul P I serve God, I'm not God This is just my opinion And welcome to another episode of the Nothing to Something Podcast <laughs> Ladies and I appreciate all y'all being here I appreciate all y'all being here And we have a really, really good conversation today This is one of the conversations that I've been waiting to have You know, with everyone You know, but, you know, it's the right timing with everything you know, that's what we always got to remember. It's the right timing for certain things. You know, you can't rush things. Can't rush things. You got to bring things in slow and gradually. You got to get the people what they want first and foremost. And then when it comes down to the things that are important to you, you got to bring them in slow. You know, when you try to rush things, people run away. Nobody want to hear all of that. Nobody want to hear all of that. Nobody here want to hear your feelings, your emotions. So you got to gradually bring things in and i think today is the right conversation for what we're gonna be talking about today you know um before we get into it though you know everybody who watching this for the first time go on and like the video get it get the like out the way you know hit that like button you know what i'm saying also subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet and hit that notification button so you can be notified when all of these good clips and interviews and one-on-ones are coming you know what I'm saying? And we still got some good stuff coming for you guys. I know y'all seen a lot of good stuff, but we still got some good stuff coming for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Also, don't be afraid to participate in the chat because you know I like to read what's going on in the chat. So go on and participate in the chat and let your boy know what you think about what we discussing. And also, too, if you want to be a sponsor of the day, hey, man, feel free to be a sponsor of the day. Hit that super chat. You heard? You know what I'm saying? Now, um... I don't know if all of y'all been keeping up with what we've been, you know, putting out there and, and what's been going on on the Nothing to Something podcast. I hope you have. I really hope you have. You should if you're watching right now, right? But uh, we've been putting out uh, uh, certain clips. We had certain interviews. You know, uh, y'all saw the Rafi the Plug, you know, a little bit. After that, we had Triple OG. You know what I'm saying? Donald Archie come through. You know what I'm saying? The uh, the the founder of... The West Side Crips, you know, um, he came and told his story and um, good, 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 good dude, you know, really good dude. Um, and um, he's going to do some really great things for the youth. Already have, but got, got a lot of other good things um, that he's planning to do for the youth, man. So if you haven't checked that interview, I'll check that one out, too. And also, I've been putting out clips with Big Youth, so y'all seen that I also interviewed him, you know. So check those clips out as well. And I've been seeing some of y'all comments say, you know, throw the whole interview out. What's up with the clips? Look, shh. Hell yeah, I'm going to throw out clips. You know what I'm saying? Your, your, your boy got to make something. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like I'm getting super chats. Where the super chats at? Asking me about clips. All y'all who saying that me, get out of here. Enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I'm going to put out clips. Because the nothing some podcast in order to do what we got to do, we got to grow and eat too. You get what I'm saying? Y'all come and get in fed. You see the lights going on. You see what's being presented. How are we going to be able to continue to present if we're not able to make sure that we also have some type of a profit that comes in? I got to be real. I'm not going to lie to you all. Think I am. I'm from the hood. I'm from the streets. I'm not going <laughs> to. I come from nothing. That's why it's called nothing or some podcast. I come from nothing. So eventually I got to put us in that position, even though it's not all about that. You get what I'm saying? I wouldn't be here if it was all about that because trust me, putting together a podcast and trying to do it to make some bread is, is not a good idea. It, it, it makes no sense, you know. But eventually, as you grow it, you do want to put yourself in position to be out here, you know, making a profit from it, you know, because that's how you're able to get better mics, get better cameras, get better lights, all of that. You get what I'm saying? You know, 
But hey, if y'all want me to, you know, put out the interviews faster and things like that, send your boy some super chats. <laughs> That wasn't even the one I was trying to hit. <laughs> there we go. The bomb. Send your boy some super chats. It's not all about that, though. But if it if it ain't about doing that, hey, just enjoy it as we continue to grow. But I do want to tell all of you, we are having a members only uh, section that we are setting up um, that we're building right now on Patreon. So if you are a part of the N2S gang gang and you become a member on patreon you will get to watch the interviews early you'll get to see the interviews before everyone else i will give more details on that later but in the future and we should have everything set up i'm gonna say within before a month we'll have everything set up to where you could go on patreon become a member and you'll be getting all the interviews as we're interviewing the individual, you know, so more details coming on that. You know what I'm saying? But let's get to it. Let's get to why we are here today. That is what is important. You know, so um, the title of today is some rappers go broke. Some athletes, well, some ballers go broke, but most businessmen don't. I'm going to say that one more time. Some rappers go broke. Some ballers go broke. You know what I'm saying? But most businessmen don't. Y'all may agree. Y'all may not agree. That's why we here talking about it right now. You know what I'm saying? So let's go on and talk about it. So um, there have been conversations out there lately in the media, you know, um, about uh, rappers and athletes, you know, um, and the conversation have been about their finances. And I thought being a man, who have his own business that got everything from the mud. Yes, I got it all from the mud. I built my business inside of my car from the mud. I was on the side where over there near Skid Row, downtown LA, um, towards Hollywood, in my car living, starting my business. Yes, so I built it from the mud. So as that individual, I felt this would be the perfect time to have a conversation that I think will be good for the audience that come here to watch the Nothing to Something podcast. And um, also people from the type of world I come from, right? Which is a very talented world. You know, the world I come from, you know, the community I come from, very, very talented. Everybody got talent in sports, music, can sing, can rap, all of it, right? So that's the uh, community I come from, right? But also the same world that have all of that talent that I come from, it's a world where most individuals live in extreme poverty. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I feel like this type of conversation is important for that community and individuals who may be like me and come from nothing and may wasn't taught much. So it's trying to learn something to get to something. You feel me? So one of the first conversations um, I wanted to have is about a live stream um, that uh, creator DJ Academics. Y'all know what DJ Academics is? Yeah, DJ Academics, um, he um, basically had a live stream where he was basically calling some of the older rappers broken, dusty. Oh, oh, you know, uh, I got DJ Academics, man. I'm not saying that you was all the way, but I got to just for the way you brought that. He had a lot of heat come at you, brother, for that one. You know what I'm saying? You know, and um, after he did that, some of the rappers like LL Cool J, that was the main one, right? Busta Rhymes. You know, uh, execs like Russell Simmons, you know, and others came out sticking up for the old school rappers like they should. That's they that's their peers. You know, that's they fraternity. That's they fraternity group. You know, if like you graduated in 1992, that's their fraternity members who came up with them. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to stick up for them. Right. Um, so um, and to go further than that, in fact, LL Cool J actually put out a video that I want to play. And um, so the video that I want to play really quick is first going to let y'all hear what academics say, right? And after you hear what academics say, then you're going to hear LL Cool J's response, you know, from that situation. And um, I'm not going to play LL Cool J's entire response. He responded. It was like a seven minute response. I'm just going to play enough for y'all to really see what's going on. All right. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. So don't go nowhere. I want y'all to know what's going on with what I'm going with this. Right? Because I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this, right? 
gonna make your boy start preaching but i'm not gonna do that today it's not about i'm not i'm not here to i'm not i'm here to give a little information but not to preach today you know i have some podcasts where it's about that right not today all right so um let's go on and get to uh um you know what academics said then what ll cool j said and then we're gonna come back all right all right let's get to it that's what it is so that's what i'm trying to tell you them old rappers man them niggas bro have you seen any of these old rappers who be like, yo, they're the foundation of hip hop, really living good? Them niggas be looking really dusty. I kid you not. And then none of y'all try to come for me because I don't fuck with y'all niggas either. So I'm just telling you the truth. Y'all be looking like every time they be like an old, old nigga talking about hip hop, you be like, yo, bro, you sure you invented this? Because everybody else living better than you. Facts. You know? Okay. All right, so that was DJ Academics talking. Now we're going to hear what L O Cool J had to say. And like I said, I'm only going to play a good couple of minutes. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But I just want y'all to get the meat of what he said. All right? So let's see what L O Cool J had to say about what DJ Academics said. So you guys might want to record this. Um, make sure you're recording this or screen recording it or something so that you, you know, you guys get it. Um, you know, I don't go live a lot. I haven't really been going live since, you know, the pandemic. But this is something that came to my attention. It came to my attention that a DJ and um, I'm not going to say any names because I don't think it's necessary. A DJ basically said that, um, you know, a lot of the pioneers in hip hop, or, you know, they're dusty or. How can they be the pure person that, um, you know, invented hip hop if, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of money um, or if they don't look or represent like they have a lot of dough. Right. Let me explain something to you um, and, and, and say this for you guys. Don't confuse someone's ability to develop a business model don't conflate in other words don't think just because somebody knows how to get money or fails to get money that they didn't make a contribution to the culture no one discusses miles davis's bank account we don't talk about john coltrane's bank account we don't talk about a lot of even rock musicians, a lot of them. We don't talk about their bank accounts. A lot of great country artists, we don't talk about their bank accounts. Um, this idea that you have to have money or else you don't have any value is a bad idea. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like, it's a misinformed way of looking at the world and the culture. There are artists out here. First of all, let me let me let me say this. First of all, you know, like let's talk about like young artists, right? Which who I love. I love the young artists. Let's be clear. I'm very much a guy who embraces the young artists. I believe in every generation. I believe in you. I care about you. Let me say this to you though. Today, you could come up with your five-year plan, your 10-year plan, your 20-year plan. You can go find a manager. You can find an accountant. You could find somebody that means something to you, um, you know, to help you. You could find a team to help your career go to the next level. When hip-hop first started, there were no managers. There were no accountants that believed in it. Okay, we'll stop it at that. We're, like I said, LL Cool J was like going off. He was really on another level with it. <laughs> so if y'all want to hear more of it, though, y'all could go and find the different um, videos on YouTube where Academics is, is is going off in his rant and saying what he said. He also responded again uh, and, 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 you know, had a response for LL Cool J, Russell Simmons, all of them. Academics, yeah, one thing I say about that dude, when smoke is coming at him, uh this dude do not back down <laughs> this dude is crazy you know what i'm saying but uh if you want to go see more on that you could go and look it up i just wanted to show y'all 
uh, let y'all hear a little bit of what's going on so y'all can keep up with where I'm going with this. You heard? I want y'all to really keep up with where I'm going with this. This isn't about academics or LL Cool J today. I just wanted y'all to see where Paul P is going with this, you know? And um, I'm going to talk more about what academics said, basically calling the rappers broken dusty. And I'm also going to talk about what a little bit about what Ella Kude said. But before I do that, um, there's another conversation that was that has been going on that I want to just speak on. Um, I'm not going to show a video on this. I'm just going to speak on it real quick. But um, did y'all see that um, Shaq interview when he went on Drink Champs with Nori? Really, really good interview. It's long, though. It's like almost three hours. Like, uh. Hey, I, 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 hey, Nori, you got to cut it down a little bit. Cut it down. You know what I'm saying? But, no, it was good, though. It was good. Straight up. It was good, right? But um, Shaq went on there, and he discussed and talked about um, how after getting a check when he started playing with the Lakers, that should have been $20 because he signed a seven-year, $120 million contract, right? <sighs> Real money. Give it up for Shaq, man. Real money, man. Give it up for Shaq. <laughs> that's, that's real money. That's real money right there. But he was talking about that contract, right? But he was talking about he got his first check, you know, because they don't give it all at once. So he got his first check, and the check was $20 million. But after all the taxes was taken out of the check, it came out to 10 9 You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he said basically after getting that check, he spent it all in three months. Yes, he spent it all in three months. <laughs> three months uh i mean hey like i always say when you come from nothing and don't understand money and you get that money like that you don't know really what to do and understand what to do with it but you know as we continue that's shack though at the end of the day shack is paid shack got money shack got bread let's not be fools let's not be stupid let's not be crazy out here we're talking about shack i'm just giving you the story on what shack said you know um, but as they continue, him and Nori started talking about how 65 to 70 percent of all ball players, ball players, athletes in general, but they speaking on basketball players at this time. But all ball players uh go broke. Six sixty-five, not all sixty-five to seventy percent of ball players go broke after retiring from the NBA, not having that money coming in no more, right? Like I said, see Shaq was able to spin like that and still have checks coming. But think about the many NBA players that spend their check like that that don't get another big contract. Hundreds of them. Not everybody's getting paid like Shaquille O'Neal, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, you know, LeBron James. You know what I'm saying? Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade. Not everybody is in the NBA getting paid like them. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about the ones who... You know, came in on a veterans uh, or, or is getting, you know, a, 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 a veterans minimum. Don't really got no more dough, but got a veterans minimum. Right. You know, uh, veterans minimum in the NBA, I think, is be, be, between like three to five mil, something like that. And he spent his money like that. And he got no more money coming in. You get what I'm saying? So not everybody's getting money like those NBA players that are really getting the bread. You know what I'm saying? So. You hear about the many rappers that are going broke, and you hear about the many athletes, ball players, and all that going broke. You hear about that all the time, you know? And it's over 50% for both. Over 50% of rappers end up going broke. Over 50% of ball players end up going broke. You heard it out Shaquille O'Neal's mouth himself. Go and look at the interview if you need to hear that as well, you know? And, 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 and you also notice in... The message LL Cool J was, you know, given or the one that I was just playing. He wasn't on there saying, oh, no, the rappers are paid. All the old school rappers are getting bread, brother. He didn't say that. He was trying to stick up for them. So at the end of the day, we know it's truth to this. Over 50 percent of the rappers go broke. Over 50 percent of the athletes, ball players go broke. And why? Because everybody can be LL. Everybody can be Shaq. Everybody can be Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, Magic Johnson, and others who made really good decisions with their money post-career and things like that. But think about this. I want y'all to put, everybody put on their thinking caps for a second. Put on, put them on, put them on. Put on your thinking caps. I want everybody to put on their thinking caps right now when I say this. Everybody. Why we don't hear 
that Russell Simmons ever went broke. The dude is in Bali right now. I guess he's out there because he don't really want to. I mean, you know, those charges came on here on onto him, you know, about the sexual assault and things like that. He's out of here. He's in Bali. You ain't in Bali living good, smiling, doing videos unless you are paid. So we don't hear about the Russell Simmons going broke. We don't hear about the L.A. Reeds going broke. We don't hear about the Barry Gordy's going broke. The Aliko Degantes going broke, who is a black billionaire who started in the cement business. If you don't know who that is, go look him up. In fact, I think he's the number. I think he's number one billionaire, right? I, I, I don't know for a fact, but he's a black billionaire. And you don't hear about the Robert Smiths going broke, who is also a black billionaire who once owned BT. And the Charlotte Bobcats before Michael Jordan took over. You don't ever hear about that. You don't. You know why, though? Do you know why? Because as a businessman, you learn early how important ownership of what you are doing is and how you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's why when you hear about businessmen, they may lose businesses. They may lose that business over there, that business over there. But most businessmen, because you know business, got other investments and opportunities going on. So you don't really hear about those guys going broke. The guys who I named, you think they haven't dealt with losing all that money at one point in time or, or, or losing a business? Of course, all of them have. But you never hear about them going broke. See, we as a community are too stuck on what we feel when it comes down to our talents and our dreams as kids and think that that's our purposes, right? You know, the th and that's what's going to make us rich. But that's the wrong way to be thinking. We just don't talk about it enough. That's the wrong way to be thinking. Oh, I want to be an NBA player when I grow up. Oh, I want to be a rapper when I grow up. Not understanding that all these other cultures out here are like, go on and do that. We're going to run the businesses that hire y'all mother. F oh, ah, 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 ah. I'm like, come on, man. We got to start teaching this stuff. Go on and be the rapper. Go on and be the NBA player. If you can make it. If you are, I'll meet you at the top, nigga. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I know sometimes the truth is hard, but I got to give it. I got to give it. Because that's the only way people going to start to listen. It's the only way we get clear and start to listen. I got to give it. These are facts. We just don't talk about it enough. Think about it. Most of the other cultures out here are focused on building businesses, which give those communities stability we don't have. That's their focus. Building businesses together. Which gives the whole community stability. Think about this, right? The talents that you have. Those are self-focused. It's good for you. Business is team-focused. Good for all of us. Talents only last for a season. You could get hurt, injured. Maybe it don't work out. Maybe after five years, it's over. Talents last for a season. But businesses can be passed to the next person and the next person and the next person. Not just the next person, but that person and the group that's around them. And you wonder why we ain't growing in our communities. Oh, they gonna hate me for that one. They gonna hate me for that one. Y'all like my suit though? Suit jacket? I had to come sharp today. 
But they gonna hate me for that one. But I gotta tell the truth. That's the only way we able to grow. Look, you know what I'm saying? Somebody gotta give the harsh reality. I'm not one of those kumbaya. That ain't me. I give the truth. I'm here to motivate, but I'm not here to put you over my arm and burp you. Oh, it's okay. So I don't do that. I give the harsh realities because that's the only way that we're going to start to understand what's real, what's not, how to change, how to not, how not to change. No, I give the harsh reality. If you're fat, go work out. If you're living with your mom, she should kick your ass out. Men, yes, I give the harsh truth, harsh reality. I don't lie. I don't sugarcoat anything. That ain't going to get us anywhere. And you ask why I focus on conversations like this. Why is this important to Paul P? Why did Paul P start a podcast called Nothing to Something? Why do we talk about what does men need to be doing better? You know what I'm saying? Because I feel that these are the conversations where I could give back. Because I know what it is basically to be in business and what it could do for you, what it could do for your community, your family and others long term. While also knowing what gratification a talent can only give you the majority of the time short term. I gonna give myself a horn. I'm speaking some true shit. Y'all need to share this with everybody out there, man. And if y'all ain't, man, get up out of here. Y'all not listening. Shoot. And asking why I ask for super chats. I'm giving y'all game. Y'all ain't getting nowhere else, man. I don't care who else out there doing it. These fools ain't giving y'all game like this. Nah, they they trying to make... they. Psh, man, I'm not even finna go there. I'm not even finna go there, man. I'm not even finna go there. Again, business financially is good long term. Talent is only good most of the time short term. You ain't going to be doing you ain't going to be 60 years old trying to dunk. You ain't going to be accepted trying to rap at 65. And that's only if you make it. This is why I preach business so much in our communities and and so much when it comes down to individuals who come from nothing. Because I'm not even saying just go out there and just get a job. You do what you got to do to put bread on the table. I get that. But that ain't what I that ain't what I'm here for. I'm here to say, hey, we all got something in us that want to be great. Right. That's why so many people are self-focused on their talents and abilities. But I say, look, if you want to be great, go out there and start something that you can help others and build something that's going to give you long term stability and success. Go start a business, something that you have ownership in. Because like I just said, 50 percent plus of rappers end up going broke. Musicians, all of them. 50 percent plus 50 percent plus of athletes, NBA players as well, football players, all of them go broke. If you ain't, especially if you're not in that top 20 of that sport, top 20% of that sport, you got a high chance of going broke. If you ain't in that top 20 of that sport, you only got about 15% of making money, making enough money to stay stable for the rest of your damn life. 15%. After you take out the top 20%, because 50% plus is automatically going broke. So you only got 15% left of individuals that may not be in the top 20% and be a superstar. But out of that little bunch, you got a chance of making enough money to last the rest of your lifetime. That's why I talk about this type of stuff. So let's go back to what DJ Academic said. I want to talk about that for a second. Now, was he right by calling the older rappers out there in the game? Broke and dusty and all of that. No, he, he could have said it better. I get it. I get that part. I'm, I'm, look, I'm harsh myself, but I'm harsh in in the areas where I got to be harsh the right way. I'm not just harsh to be harsh. 
I got to give the real truth, the real reality. That's where the harshness come in at. Right? But the way he said it was it right? No. But me, I don't really care about the way people say things because I could take anything. It is what it is. But what he said was it right. He was absolutely correct in what he said. LL Cool J has some truth too, but we got to talk about the facts, not the sentimental, emotional, feeling side of it. That's where LL was coming from, which is okay. He come up with those group of guys. But let's give the facts. Was academics facts, factual in what he said? 100% he was. Because of the statistics, most of the rappers who were out in the 80s and 90s are broke. A lot of the musicians who were out at that time are broke. He wasn't lying with what he said. At the end of the day, most rappers who are not still active are not financially successful. Forget the ones who are still active. Even rappers that are active. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody's not Drake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. And you know why? Because they don't have a skill or trade or something to fall back on. They wasn't educated. I get it. We all wasn't educated coming from that world, right? We all wasn't educated. I wasn't educated. I had to learn. I had to hit my head on con in the concrete many, many, many times before I started to learn. But I'm just giving you the facts. See, uh, they want us to be. Look, man, I'm about to. I'm going places I wasn't even going to try to go today, man. Y'all about to have me go there, man. Because your boy, man, that's what I'm saying. I need, I need one of those platforms where I can just be on the stage walking, walking back and forth and just talking. You know what I'm saying? Just giving it to them. I would have to have, well, I would have, to have some security and stuff like that, though, because the stuff I, I would say that's in my head, man, they'd probably try to kill me. I ain't going to lie. But, but, but sometimes it's important to say this. But I gotta, I, I'm gonna say this though. When it comes down to focusing on your talents solely, growing up as a kid having a dream, oh, I wanna be. to be that even if you make it that's what they want they're cool with it you know why because it keep you mentally out the way of others real goal and that's to own the foundations that one day your talent is going to be on if you do make it because they run the businesses they make the decisions. You're there just because of your talent. What if they tell LeBron James, shut up and dribble? Because you don't own none of this. You're here because of your talent, buddy. <laughs> These are facts. What, am I lying? If I'm lying, write it in the chat and tell me I'm lying. Write it in the chat and tell me I'm lying. If I'm lying. Because I know I'm not lying. These are facts. Nobody's going to complain. The only ones, you know, the only ones who, who hate on our talents and stuff like that when we do make it? The ones who are our next door neighbors, family members, the ones who are in our community. Because we so, we thinking so fucking small, man. We're hating off of something that nobody else give a damn about because it's just one person with one damn talent. When that person, instead of hating, should say, okay, I may not be able to pick up a ball like that. In fact, flick a ball. Let me start up the company that's going to help bring more opportunities to this basketball star who's my cousin. Let me start up the company that's going to be able to get the commercials, get the movies and all of that type of stuff. Because guess what? You starting that company, you're going to have more ownership rights than the cousin who's the ball player. This is the way we got to stop. start thinking. We got to stop 
lazy thinking. That's what, that's that's the word of the day. Lazy thinking. We got to stop lazy thinking. I ain't never hated on nobody. My goal was always to get everyone together and let's build something. Always. I didn't know how, though. 18, 19, 20, I didn't know how. And, you know, I had the talent of, 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 of basketball in high school, growing up and stuff like that. And then after that, did music, had the talent, good writer, things like that and everything. You know what I'm saying? So I just, want to, I just knew I wanted to do something that would bring others together. But at the end of the day, I never had hate. Because I knew that it was something wrong. I'm like, it's something off. Like, why are they all getting money like that together, happy, smiling? And we over here hating off of one person who got a better basketball talent than me. This is stupid. That's why conversations like this is important. Now, when it came down to Shaq and Nori, they said it exactly right. Now, this is on a larger scale because NBA players are getting way more money. I get it. But what Shaq and Nori said, I agree with. When it comes to ball players, think about think about this when it comes to ball players. And this is why it's important to talk about this too. Because you got to think about the people in your community and stuff like that who are playing sports, who are focused on that sport 24 hours a day, right? No time to really learn anything else. Solely focus on that sport. Think about this. Most athletes, especially you come from nothing, come from the hood, wasn't taught nothing, but you got to make it out for the family, right? So you focus on the sport. They have been training on how to be the best basketball player, baseball, football player, their entire lives, right? And unless they're Michael Jordan or LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and like I say, that top 20% who is able to build brands off of their names alone, they don't have no businesses because they wouldn't know where to start. They were jocks their entire lives. Their entire lives. They were sports players. They don't know nothing about no business. And think about the high school kid who had been an athlete his entire life that went undrafted, right? Went undrafted because he went to a D3 school because his grades wasn't good. He wasn't able to go to Duke, USC, UCLA. So he went undrafted, went up to a D3 school, average 30 a game though, right? So he was able to enter the draft, but went undrafted. But then went to the G League, played overseas and things like that for three to five years, and now his career is over. Example, somebody like Lenny Cook. Did a video about him a long time ago. Lenny Cook. Somebody like that, a little bit of overseas ball, a little bit of G League ball, D League, whatever you want to call it. But after three to five years, his career is over. Never made even a couple of hundred thousand, maybe a hundred thousand tops. But because he was practicing to be a great basketball player his whole life, and he come from a place where they don't teach anything dealing with business, are dealing with growth when it comes down to trying to have something in your life where you could be the owner of, you could run, you could give your family opportunities, things like that. He was never, people like that was never taught that. So after that is over, that's it. Because he wasn't learning anything else. That's it. Go look at the Lenny Cook story. Go look at how he was living after his basketball career was over. The dude was still in the hood, but he in the hood known. Everybody know who Lenny Cook is because he was number one. He was the number one prospect over LeBron James when they were juniors until LeBron James took over and became number one. So he's a well-known name, but he's still living in the hood because he don't know anything else but basketball, man. But that's over. Short term success. We're not all going to be in that top 20% of athletes, man. In fact, when it comes down to athletes in the world in total, it only 5% of people, five per, no, one to about 3%, even make it as an athlete in sports. 
But I'm going straight in the sports world. Out of all of them, only about 20% end up being successful after the sport is over, after their career is over. You're going to put all your eggs in that basket? That's why we need to be talking about things like this. That's why. I'm going to read some of the um the comments in the chat really quick. And then I'm going to, uh, uh, I got a couple more things I want to say to close out. Some important things. So, hey, all y'all stay tuned, man. I'm not done. I'm not done. All right, I got to give some knowledge today. I have to. This is what Paul P is here for, man. I went through hell in my life to be able to be here to give this type of knowledge. I went through hell. Think about this. This is why I say, man, at the end of the day, some people say don't ask. No, I'm going to ask. Support this channel. Support your boy because everything I went through was for y'all. Everything I went through hell in my life. Y'all don't even get it. I could have gave up after I got stabbed. I could have gave up after I was like out there on the streets calling family members and nobody really wanted to pick up. Nobody wanted to help your boy out. I could have gave up then. I didn't. I kept pushing. Didn't ask nobody for nothing. I went through all that to one day be in this position to be able to say, hey, I've been there, done this, and I've done this successfully. Here goes some game. So, hey, listen to what's going on. Listen to the information. Listen to the knowledge. Because I want y'all to take some of this knowledge and understand and learn and start to educate yourselves and be like, hey, yeah, we got to switch it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to switch it up because this ain't the way. Trying to just focus on making it in this rap is not the way. Trying to just focus on... Being like Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, this ain't the way. That's what others want us to think. But I'm here to say that's bullshit. Don't think that way. All right, let's read some of the, some of what people are saying in the chat really quick, all right? All right, and I'm only going to read real things. You know, people just talking about, hey, this is, you know, a, a, a new pod, you know, podcast and, and naming the title. In the comments, I'm not reading that. I'm gonna read um um good questions and, and, and good things that are wrote, you know. So let's see what we got going on. Big shit. Why they killed you, huh? Wow. Hey, get your bread. Okay, let's see what this is. Um shit back him and what a name. Um I'm with that big bro. Get your bread. Man, appreciate that, man. Yeah, 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 your name is is a little different, but hey, you know, hey, if it works for you, it works for you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Shit back. Um what a name. What a name. But um I appreciate what you said though. I really do. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, Look, and, and, and when I was talking about getting your getting your bread and stuff like that, I wasn't basically saying that to say whatever you're getting into in your life, right off the bat, get your bread or whatever. That that's unrealistic. So everything that I'm doing, everything that I have done, it wasn't getting into it to say I'm gonna make some money right now. In fact, I got in it not really thinking about the money part in the beginning. When you first start something, it's about putting in the work, putting in the time, putting in the effort, but eventually putting yourself in position where now you can bring the bread in. Now you can make profits and things like that from what you are doing, because eventually you got to eat. Yes. But you got to build first. You know what I'm saying? But um, appreciate that again. Appreciate that again. All right. All right. I see Monica. Monica Sedell, good uh, noon, Paul. I'm really enjoying your shows here on YouTube. Appreciate that, Monica. Appreciate that a lot, Monica. And, uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. I get a. I got to get a better bomb noise, huh? Hey, hey, be real. We be real here. You know, I be real with y'all. Be real with me. I got to get a better bomb noise. That bomb ain't ain't, ain't popping. It ain't it ain't popping at all. Not at all. All right. Let's see who else got something to say today. All right. So anyone Okay, let's see All right Let's see 
Now, it looked like most people are just commenting on, um, let me see. Certain things, let me see. Okay. Okay, we got uh, Nate Cobb 102. It's all about the person on how they invest their money and what they're satisfied with in life. Hey, Nate, I appreciate the comment. I really do. But um, fuck what you satisfy with in life. Fuck that. And you know, I don't really cuss that. I, I, don't, I don't like to really, you know, cuss, but I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Forget what you satisfy with in life. At the end of the day, it's about taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, and putting yourself in the best position to where you're going to be able to have long-term success. It's not just about doing what you're satisfied with doing. If it was about that when we was younger and our parents had to discipline us, we wouldn't have got disciplined. Because we they would have just said, go and do what you're satisfied with doing. It's not about that. See, that's how you have a lot of broke and, 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 poor, and, and, and bums out here living with a mom and dad, living in their mother's basements. All right? Trying to do what they satisfy with in life. And, and I'm not even saying this is how you explaining it, Nate. I'm not even saying that, you know, and I do appreciate the comment. But I'm just saying at the end of the day, it's not about doing what you're satisfied with. It's about doing what's going to put you in the best position to be able to be out here successful and winning. Taking care of your family and your loved ones. Taking care of the community if you can. Helping out the community if you can. I know 60-year-olds who tried to do what they were satisfied with their whole life and out here bumming it. What about them? Should they continue to do it? Well, by now, they probably they got that much more time to go. I don't know. But I'm just saying. Do you think they should be telling some of the young kids, do what you're satisfied with in life, son? No. That's definitely not the message that I'm out here giving. It's not about doing what you're satisfied with. It's about doing what's what's right. Now, what I will say if say is growing up and when learning business and learning certain things to where you can have ownership one day, things to invest in one day and everything like that, maybe do a business or something like that that pertains to something that you're into, something that you love or whatever. But... Learning business, I'm telling you this right now, is not all that satisfying in the beginning. It's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult. But it could become satisfying, um, you know, later in life. But I'm just saying, when it comes down to it, don't just do what you're satisfied with. Not at all. That ain't what I'm preaching here. You know what I'm saying? I got to get a reality. You ain't getting far in life just doing what you're satisfied with in life. That ain't how life works. I'm sorry. And don't be mad at me. Talk to God about it. Get on your knees and pray. And ask God, why didn't we just get to be born and be rich and not have to worry about anything? Go ask God about that. But I'm telling you the reality of the world we're living in. And it's not just about being satisfied. You got to do what you got to do. All right. Appreciate the comment. The YouTubers focus on making it. That's why they fall off. Let's see what Young Trey he says. Uh, that's facts. Most of the YouTubers focus on making it. That's why they fall off. I mean, that's that's facts. You know, but let me tell you this: when it comes down to a lot of YouTubers, man, let me tell you, you in a lot of ways, the a lot of people are out here doing these are money schemes, man. At the end of the day. You know, tell people what they want to hear, make them feel like what you did, they could just go out there and do and make a lot of money off of that type of content. Make a lot of people money off of people hiring your services to tell them, yeah, you could do it. Go on, on Johnny. You can make it. Just do it like me. I promise you got it. They make a lot of money off of that, bro. And I'm just saying th that ain't the type of YouTuber to listen to. That ain't the type of person to be on here listening to see uh, this is what we got to stop doing a lot of y'all got to stop listening to what feels good to y'all ears a lot of y'all got to stop that that ain't gonna get you nowhere in life it's not about what feels good to your ears it's about what can help you grow it's about hearing the hard truth so you can get out of the situation that you in 
It's about understanding, A, you got a high chance. You're not going to make it in music. But at the end of the day, that shouldn't be your focus anyways. Why are, the, why are we the only culture where all of us are focusing on music and, 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 and uh, uh, sports? Why? Think about it. Think about it. Why? Oh, is it because our great genetics and all of that? That's what people like to say. Oh, we got the best genetics. Man, nobody gives a shit about your genetics, man. They don't care. They're the billionaires, and most of their family are millionaires. They don't care about your genetics. Look, man, we got to stop this. We got to stop this. I, I, this. Nobody care about that. We got to stop saying stuff like, oh, us as black people, we're the strongest. We're the, we're, the, we're the fastest. We're the this and we're the that. That should not be the conversation because that don't make everybody successful around you. Yeah, maybe if you turn it to LeBron, I get it. But let's stop using them as the example. Let's use the everyday dude in the hood who is fast and got talent but didn't make it as the example. Because that's the common majority. Or may have made it but only had a two to three year career and didn't even make more than $200,000. And now he's back home living with his mom because he spent all his money. Let's use him as the example. So at the end of the day, it's about speaking the truth. That's why I'm here, to speak the truth. I'm not here to tell no lie. That's why this is the realest podcast. This is the realest and most motivational podcast out there. Because I'm going to give you the real, but I'm going to motivate the shit out of you. I'm going to motivate you so bad that after you get done listening to this podcast, I promise you, I promise you, you either going to go crying to your mom complaining and all of that type of stuff curl up in a ball and cry for a whole nother week after that are you gonna get up throw your pants on get off of that computer that you're sitting down on with your drawers and you're gonna go out there and make something happen you're gonna do one or the other you're gonna bitch up or you're gonna man up after listening to this after listening to me so it's the realest but it's the most motivational Appreciate the comment, and Tracy. Appreciate it a lot. All right. See if anybody else really have something to say. I can't really see who's that. Uh, Lewis Powell. Keep it grind strong, black man. Appreciate that, Lewis. Appreciate that, brother. Straight up. Let's get right first on my phone. Lewis. Welcome, Lewis. Welcome. Appreciate you, man. All right, all right. We got my boy Young. I usually don't read back to back, but I say, yo, it's Young Trace. It was just Young Trace and said, Young Trace and a good. I like Young Trace. I, 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 I like Young Trace and a lot. Today's show, brother, is an inspirational no cap. I can confess that. My guy, my guy. Appreciate that, Young Trace. Hey, just trying to give knowledge that I can. Look, for me, that's all it's about, man. That's all it's about. I want, I want, I always say, everything that God installed in, in me is to give to y'all. Anybody who holding anything inside of them that God gave them the ability to, to be able to have are, are to me cowards and, 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 and self-centered if they're not giving back. Everything that I learned, I want to give. I don't want to keep this inside. I want to give it all. And I don't, I don't, you know, it ain't about wanting anything for it because I really don't want nothing for it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, you got things where you're going to want to make a profit of it you know, at the end of the day. But I'm just saying when I'm giving this type of information, it ain't really to gain anything except for knowing that y'all feel like y'all got something out of this message. That's what it's really for. So I appreciate you recognizing that, young Tracy. I really do. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. All right. Oh yeah, uh, Nate Cobb came out. Nate, Nate Cobb one hundred and two. He said, "Well, nah, not like that." I, I get what uh, you're saying, though. No. Okay, okay. I, I just want to make sure, Nate. I want to make sure that you know you wasn't just putting out there. You know, people should be out here just doing what they really want to do and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's not what it's about. It's about doing what you need to be doing and what you have to be doing. Hey, look, and, and I'm glad that you wrote. Thank you, um, Nate Cobb, for saying that. But I just want to say this. Think about this. Do you think about all do you think all these six figure 
successful families slash millionaire families that are in these Jewish communities, uh, Persian communities, um, Caucasian communities, uh, 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 um, Indian communities. Um, you know, I could go on and on. Um, um, German communities, whatever. I could go on and on, right? Do you think they really care about doing what they're satisfied with doing? No. They're doing what brings the bag, the long-term success for the family. They doing what they got to do to help their culture continue to grow. You know, they thinking about, let me tell you what's so dope about some of these other communities. I, and I got to be real. I just got to be real. I'm sorry. If people don't like what I'm saying, and, and it's not, and I'm not shitting on it, but I, I love the community I come from. I'm not shitting on them, right? But I got to be real. They think about the culture and the community after they're gone. We thinking about now. We're thinking about what makes me feel good. That's a problem. That's why we get into things that only have to do with our talents, but not understanding finances and money have us end up being broke. And really, at the end of the day, doesn't help out nobody. Long term. That's a problem. And we got to start rethinking and relearning, man. We got to start doing that. And understanding that, hey, it, it, this this is not the, the way that we should be going and going forward. This is not the way we got to continue to teach the youth because other cultures and communities are going to continue to go. And this isn't about like singling out coaches, but I got to be real. I'm just telling you what's, what's going on. So I got to be real. This isn't about singling anybody out. It ain't about that, but it's about telling you what's going on. Right. So when it comes down to all those other ones, they are about all of us. We got to stop being about just us. That's just something I wanted to point out, man. So let's let's continue. But appreciate the comment, Nate Cobb. Appreciate it a lot. All right. Oh, okay. I, I'll put this up too, Nate Cobb. I was just speaking on DJ Academics Comics. Okay. Hey, thanks for explaining. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes if I read something and, and if I don't read it right, um, yeah, just do what Nate did. You know what I'm saying? Just explain it. I'm going to try to get to uh reading everything you know what i'm saying as much as i can sometimes i can't read everything but if you respond i will look for your response if i especially if i ask you to explain it you know so appreciate that um nate appreciate that a lot appreciate that all right let me see Try to okay i'll leave it at that for right now because i gotta get through the rest of this so uh look I, when it comes down to talking about business and things like that, it's the reason why this is my number one goal with with wanting to do a podcast like this, talk about the things I talked about, especially with the conversation that's out there uh, uh, with DJ Academics and, and others talking about rappers being broke, which is real. A lot of them are. And then Shaq bringing up over 65 to 70 percent of uh, basketball players are broke, which is real. I talk about business and things like that because I want to see more people grow, especially when it comes down to the youth. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple of things. I want to see people continue to build their relationship with God and grow when it comes down to showing the youth and the poor communities I come from how putting all your eggs in one basket is not the way to go. When you focus on just your talent, that's what you're doing. You're putting all your eggs in one basket because in order to make it in that talent, it's going to take everything out of you. And by the time you give all of that, what do you got to give others? Especially if you didn't make it and you're not making a hundred million a year to just say, okay, I'm going to just give you this. I'm going to set up this for you. You know what I'm saying? You're not able to really give anything back. But also to teach, want to talk about things like this and everything when it comes down to business because I want people to understand and learn what an EIN number is. Do a lot of y'all know what an EIN number is when it comes down to business? I, I'm, I'm asking. Do, it's, if, if somebody, do, explain it. But do a lot of y'all even know what an EIN number is? An EIN number is basically your business social security number. Once you have an EIN number, you can now go in and you got a business that you have that, has been build, that, that you've been building for at least six months. You now have a EIN slash social security number for your business where you can now go and buy a house with that. See, these are the things that people don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Other other places know it, but a lot of times we don't. You know? 
I want people to understand to learn how to build business plans. Do a lot of y'all know how to build a business plan? Learn how to get a business account. Learn how to run a payroll. Learn what marketing strategies is. Learn what guerrilla marketing is. Learn what trademarking is. Learn what profits is and what is minimizing your loss mean. I want to be able to teach those things. And I think that our community should be teaching more of those things and not solely focus on sports and music. Not just having conversation of what, oh, what NBA player you want to be like to the one who are the ball players in the community that we come from. Or how your rap bars are the hardest. Oh, my nephew got the hardest rap bars ever. I want other conversations to start being had, man. Because I want y'all to understand, man. The businessmen, they don't go broke. They don't go broke. You know, and I, I want to just say this, man, and I'm going to end it after this. And I want y'all to really pay attention. One more thing I just want to point out. There are 15 black billionaires out there, right? 15 of them. And only three of them are either rappers or basketball players. And those three are Kanye West, Michael Jordan, and Jay-Z. And, I mean, you can add Rihanna if you want, you know, uh, even though she's not a rapper. You can add Rihanna. Let's go on and add Rihanna because I want to break down something. You know what I'm saying? Wait for it. I want to break down something. And I'm going to end this on this. I just want y'all to hear this. Music are getting paid for the sport is not what made those four individuals billionaires. You know that, right? It's the business side of what they did that made them billionaires. Not Jay-Z rapping, not Rihanna singing, not Kanye rapping, not Michael Jordan, not Michael Jordan playing basketball and getting paid from the sport. It's the business moves they made that made them billionaires. This is why it's important to understand and learn business. So remember this, and I'm going to end it at this. Don't put all your eggs in one basket when it comes down to your talent. Learn everything you can about business early. Us, who are the older generation, teach the youth. If you didn't really learn, tell them to pick up a book and learn more about business. Put them in some classes that teach them about certain things. You know what I'm saying? Because as the owner, you're creating the jobs. And what you're doing is long term. But when it comes down to the talent, it's just short term. All right. And I'm going to leave it at that, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Your boy, we want to go on and on. But I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you all for joining. Hey, and I got some great stuff coming up. I promise you, I got some amazing things coming up for all of you, man. Just continue to look. Hit that notification button just to be notified when we got some new coming. All right? I love you all. It's your boy, Paul P. We are out of here. Deuces. <laughs> I had to show